Hello Addicted, welcome back to my channel, I'm your host Shiki and here we are with the second episode of the 99. Today we're gonna take a look at one of my babies, Shalku and Bringer. Isn't she cute? This is the only one. Shaoku is a 5 5 for 7 mana with flying. She can't attack unless she's the only creature on the battlefield and she hits you for 3 life during your upkeep. And you may be thinking, okay, she sucks, but no! Tap her and exile a creature and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on her. That's brutal and totally worthy downside. So, what's the deck about? It's a mono black control deck, normally for versus, but she can stand in a multiplayer with a little dust advantage though. What's the plan? To keep the board clean and kill the opponent. How do we do it? We need to keep the board with the less number of creatures in order to make our baby attack. This means blowing the board every now and then. Damnation is the most known way to do it. Just destroy all creatures and they can be regenerated. Bantu's Last Reckoning destroy them all, but your lands don't untap your next turn. Deadly Tempest not only destroy all creatures too, but each player loses life equal to the number of creatures destroyed that they control, so normally that's not a problem for you. Black Sun Zenith wipes indestructible as long as you get enough mana to pay the X for the minus one minus one counters, and besides that it shuffles itself back into the deck. The Crew of Pain destroys all creatures and gives you a card for each of them, and if you cycle it, it gives minus 2 minus 2 to each creature. Our Woman Forces destroy all creatures too, but only the ones that your opponents control, and it gives you cards for each of them. Forced March destroy all creatures that cost X or less, and as our Shock is expensive, she will usually survive this. And Mutilate gives minus X minus X to all creatures, where X is the number of swamps you control, which should be enough to kill everything. But if that's not enough, all it does will cleanse everything but colorless permanents. We also run Curse of Death's Hold to deal against token decks, giving a permanent minus one minus one to all creatures that player controls can easily shut them down. Oblivion Stone is a panic button to deal with not only creatures but with artifact enchantments and planeswalkers. For 4 mana you can protect one, and for 5 you destroy everything. Perilous Bolt is another extreme panic button that excels all non permanents for 5 mana. And finally, a very underrated card that is glorious in this deck, Perkulis. As long as there are 2 or more creatures in play, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it gets exiled under Perkulis until it leaves the battlefield. Shaoku can easily kill us if we don't take care of her properly. Priestin Talisman is the simplest way to heal us, tap for one colorless mana and give us life, but that's not enough. Benzer Journal not only gives us unlimited hand size, but also heals us during the upkeep. As long as we have 3 or more cards in hand, Shaoku becomes calm. Deadly Wanderings give Shaoku plus 2 plus 0, Death Touch and Life Link as long as she is our only creature. And Homicidal Seclusion removes the Death Touch but grants us plus 3 plus 1 instead. Weep of Erebus grant other creatures Life Link, which is great to gain life, obviously. But we only run 10 creatures, so the ability, the second one, is rarely used. Eternity Vessel resets our life every time we drop land to the number of counters it had when it entered, so long as we played it when we have a high life, we are going to be safe. However, the real goal in this deck is Eon Hub. It calms our baby once and for all by removing the objects. Not only that, but Eon Hubs also help us with some nasty cards we'll see later on. Tapping to exile any creature is brutal, so we are going to explode it. Lightning Graves and Switchfoot Boots not only protect her, but also let her exile as soon as she hits the ground. Thousand Euro Elixir let us tap her for exile as if she had haste, and not only that, but paying one and tapping the elixir let us untap her to either attack if she's alone or to exile again. Umber Mountain let us untap our baby for 3 mana, and that gives her plus 2 plus 2. And we also run Catrillon of War to make her attack stronger because of the exalted. We included Arcane Lighthouse to remove Hexproof and Shroud from openings and their creatures, and Detector Tower does the same but only with Hexproof. This way we make sure Shaoko can target them. Tower of the Magistrate also let us mess with our opponent's creatures, giving them protection from artifacts so they can't keep boots to them. We run a kind of complicated infinite mana combo using Umber Mountain, some Swamps and Magus of the Coffers. The infinite mana used for either Terminal of Hailfire or Exsanguinate, which turns into an instant win. 
Those two are really effective even without infinite mana. But the real nasty value plays can shut down your opponents if they don't have removal on time. Ian Huff, as we mentioned, not only help us deal with Shaoku, but also torture our opponent's existence when we play Contamination or Infernal Darkness. Infernal Darkness has a cumulated upkeep of 1 life and 1 black, so Ion Huff shuts that down, and Contamination asks us to sacrifice a creature during the upkeep. If we don't, we sacrifice Contamination. But if we don't have Ion Huff, we can still keep playing Contamination if we play Ophiomancer, which gives us a snake each upkeep if we have no other snakes. As our commander is expensive in mana, we need to produce a lot of mana. First, we run 17 basic swamps because we have cards that interact with them, so we need to be sure we have enough. We also run 18 non-basic lands to be sure we are fine. Besides the one already mentioned that let creatures be targeted by Shaoku in Cathedral of War, we run of course Urburg, which turns each land into a swamp in addition to their other types, and this will be usually the first land you will ever tutor or ramp. With it, of course, we run Cal Coffers, which adds mana for each swamp we've been thrown, and Cabal Stronghold, which does the same but for only basic swamps. The certain temple on taps a land, typically a Cabal Coffers, but it can be a Nyctus, who adds mana equal to our devotion to black. We run a Thespian stage to copy any land, hopefully the Coffers, and we run a Visuva for the same reason. Bohuka Bog is a must-have in all black decks, which exiles the graveyard of a player when it enters the battlefield. In case someone's tried to be too smart, we run a Ghost Quarter to replace their land that we don't approve with a basic one. And that one can even turn one of our lands in a swamp if we are desperate for something. Myriad Landscape let us ramp, searching for two swamps, and Terrain Generators ramp us by putting a basic swamp from hand into play. Blighted Fen makes an opponent sacrifice a creature, and finally Reliquary Tower is here to keep us with an unlimited hand size. We also run a Blanket of Night as a backup for Urborg, with all our land swamps, Prip Gas and Nirkana Revenant double our mana, as well as Cage's Sun. Our basic lands get the benefit of extra planar lands and Gauntlet of Power to add extra mana. Besides that, we run Gilded Lotus, Soul Ring, Tran Dynamo, and the already mentioned Pristine Talisman as mana rocks. I know it doesn't sound like too much, but trust me, I've been able to play Shaoku on turn 3 with this. To ramp, we have the two lands that we mentioned already, an exploration map, which let us search for any land that we need in the moment. As I said, that's usually Urbor, but that can totally be Cabal Coffers or Nyctus. As this is a control deck, we need to have a lot of control cards. The board wipes on step 1 are part of them, but that can be the only thing. Starting with creatures, Avatar Vo taps to destroy a creature, while Pain 6 for that imposter exiles a creature and gives it a plus one plus one counter and all its activated abilities. Fleshback Marauders and Custody Leech makes our opponent sacrifice a creature when they enter. Besides, Custody Leech gives us the monarchy. And finally, Shimmy Spectre let us exile a card from our opponent's hand when it deals combat damage. We also run an Obliate to exile any creature with it. It's like a black Oblivion Ring for creatures. Diabolic Edict gets Verdict and Tribute to Hunger makes our opponent sacrifice a creature at instant speed. And Tribute of Hunger gives us life. Perilous Predicament makes our opponent sacrifice both an artifact creature and a non-artifact creature at instant speed, and we saw already Blighted Fen for sacrificing at instant speed. Chainer's Edict makes them sacrifice a creature too, but a sorcerer speed, and it has flashbacks, so we can do it twice. While Consuming Vapors also do it twice, but it's with Rebound, and this one also gives us life. We run a Grip of Desolation to take down not only a creature but a land as well, and this one is really cool because it's an instant, almost nobody sees this coming. Ashes to Ashes exiles two creatures at the price of 5 life, and the two best answers nobody expects in a mono black. Imp's Mischief changes the target of a spell with a single target, and you lose life equal to the converted mana cost of that spell. So if a player tries to make a counter, you can counter their counter with Imp's Mischief, changing the target. And if we are talking about counters, what better than Withering Boon, a counter spell for a creature at the cost of 3 life. You will not believe the faces of someone when you try to counter them in mono black. It's amazing. To draw, we use Overwhelming Forces and Decree of Pain, as mentioned before, but we included Necropotence too. It skips our draw step and let us pay life to get that many cards at the end of turn. 
We only have to be a little careful here because if cards get discarded, they are exiled. So we have to be very careful here. As Shaoku is so expensive to cast, we need to make sure she is protected. The boots protect her from target spells. Dark Seal Plate makes her indestructible, so we don't have to worry about our own border waves. Except, of course, for Peru Bolt and all this dust, but we usually don't play that if Shaoku is in play, unless it's extreme. But anyway, Renegades get away, make any permanent indestructible, and also creates a token. The only artifact we haven't covered yet is the Sculpting Seal. For 3 mana, enter the battlefield as a copy of any other artifact, usually our Kill the Lotus or our Tran Dynamo. We mentioned all the creatures already, so we'll skip this part. As I said, there are just 10 creatures, so yeah. Same here with enchantments, we covered them already. And for our miscellaneous cards, we run Direct Petition and Demonic Tutor are tutors. Their petition is great because it gives us normally 3 mana because of the removal we cast already. Diabolic Revelations let us search for X cards. With enough mana, this search for Boots, Maggots of the Covers, Umber Mantle, and either Exanguinate or Turbant or Hailfire for a win. I like to play World Spheres because it lets me screw my opponent's worst state by controlling them of making everything that benefits me and damage them. And finally, Sadistic Sacrament let us exile 3 cards in early game from the opponent's deck, in which normally is combo pieces, but it let us exile 15 cards in late game and we will aim for anything that is disrupt us or any left combo pieces. And that's the deck. She's super cool to play with and I love her, she's, she's really cool, I really love her, she's one of my babies, but as I said, in multiplayer it's a little complicated, still she's one of my favorites, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did let me know in the comments, hit the like, subscribe and share, that will help me a lot. I'll face out until next Wednesday, but meanwhile you can follow me on social media, I'll leave the links in the description. And also click the bell if you want to get notified when I upload the next deck tech video. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye.